And right now, very pleased to have with us in studio Congressman Blake Farenthold from the great state of Texas. How are you, sir? Great. Good to be with you. Yes, it's, I, it's hard to believe this is the first time you've actually been in studio with well, us. We've been on the phone a lot. I know. Well, thank you for coming down. Emily Miller of the Washington Times is with us as well. And, Emily, right. thank you for your time. Uh, Congressman, you know, you've been uh, involved in the, uh, the the House Oversight Committee uh, with Fast and Furious, now with the Benghazi hearings and the uh, IRS hearings. I've got to ask you, just, you know, generally speaking, with all of what we are seeing and hearing surrounding uh, Attorney General Eric Holder, uh, we've even seen the Huffington Post say that it's time for Eric Holder to resign. What What do you want to see from the Attorney General the next time he comes before the House Oversight Committee? A letter of resignation. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's the he's the bad face of the administration. You think the Justice Department is in charge of prosecuting all these bad things that are going on, and they're not doing it. You know, he can't prosecute himself. I guess he could prosecute himself, but he's not going to. They should be investigating this whole thing going on uh, with the IRS. They should be investigating uh, Sebelius and everything that she's doing, shaking down uh, the organizations that she regulates to try to get money to fund Obamacare, but we've got an attorney general that's nothing but a shield for the White House. And then, and you, you know, as you mentioned as a reporter, what stands out to me is that the only person he seems to be prosecuting are other reporters. He you know, signs this warrant to go after James Rosen and Fox News email and phone calls. What well, do you think ho about hopefully, that? Hopefully, you know, th it's a horrible intrusion on the First Amendment and what we think is right in the United States. But maybe it's going to wake the uh, mainstream media up that Eric Holder and the Obama administration are not their friends mm -hmm. and they'll get back to work doing their job, reporting on some of the things we've been talking about uh, right here. Well, you know, and, and you talk about the attack on the First Amendment. We've we've also talked about the assault on the, uh, the Second Amendment. I, I, I think it's fair to say that, you know, look... Our rights really aren't that important to a lot of these folks. Uh, no. What is important is, you know, the the ability to say we're we're making this country secure, or we're doing this, we're doing that, uh, and and less and less is it about what we the people are able to do in in, in our sphere of freedom, in our sphere of liberty. We're living in a much more government centric world, and that's not what this country is about. Nobody makes a better life for themselves on the back of the government. The government can help you in the short term, say in short term uh, unemployment, but you're never going to come out of your station in life on the back of the government unless you win the lottery, and that doesn't happen very often. If you're collecting a check for the government, expecting them to pay for your health care, pay for everything, you're going to get mediocrity at best. You are the only one that's going to be able to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And, you know, that, that attitude of self-reliance, I mean, we're here on Sportsman Channel, and, and I think that you find it throughout the, the, the sportsman ethos. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's why we... Uh, I, I, I think are able to pass these traditions uh, on to our kids, but yeah, we can hunt and gather. Exactly, exactly. But you know, as you say, we live in a, a, a world in which um, it seems like we are being told. Emily, you go through this with with trying to exercise your right to to keep and bear arms in Washington D.C. And I don't have the right to bear arms in Washington D.C. We're told not to be self reliant. Don't be don't don't be able to take you're care not, of you're, yourself. It's the Bloomberg nanny mentality right. of this country, you know, and Bloomberg, so we all know, is spending right now millions and millions of dollars going after senators whose votes he just didn't like on gun control. And it's crazy and uh, you know, just despite him I had a thirty two ounce Dr. Pepper with breakfast <laughs> this morning. Yeah, and you know, despite you, I think he just dropped a million dollar ad buy in uh, your district. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, are, are, does that concern you? Uh, obviously, you know, you're a conservative. I assume that you are a believer in the free market and the First Amendment, and people have the ability to speak their mind. But uh, uh, are, are you concerned that a billionaire from New York uh, could influence an election in your district uh, uh, unduly? I think Texans are smarter than to fall for that. I'm, <laughs> I'm certainly hoping so. Yeah, I've done a pretty good job representing uh, the folks of the 27th District of Texas, uh, but I have to earn my job every two years, just like every other member of the House of Representatives does. What have you heard since the votes in the Senate? Um, what have you been hearing from your constituents? I, I'm imagining the call volume has dropped off a little bit, but but have you heard, uh, are you hearing from more gun control advocates, people saying, Congressman, if this comes over to the House, we expect you to, to stand it's, up and it, vote for this It's dead stuff. on arrival at the House. I'm just worried about the end run around the House with the U.N. Small Arms Treaty. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that, all, that all started rolling again uh, today. That's right, yeah. But, uh, you know, I can't believe after the Senate uh, had their vote that the Senate would approve that. They know better. 
You look at what happened back uh, the last time the Senate uh, and the House passed uh, gun control. There was a huge turnover, and these senators aren't uh, aren't foolish. And you know, it gives the opportunity for some of the Democrats from the uh, Northeast and West Coast to bang their chest about guns. But there are a lot of folks uh, in the Senate and the House of Representatives that were elected from what is euphemistically referred to as the flyover states, which is where I live. Right. Well, actually, we've got Houston and Dallas, so you stop there a lot on the airplanes. <laughs> the the connection, connection states. Yeah, Texas is now the layover state, yeah. I guess. Uh, no, but and I, 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 look, I think you're right about that. And, and I know that we've got these groups, and Emily, you've been covering Mayor Bloomberg and uh, what this uh, administration has been going back to uh, Fast and Furious. There has been a mindset. We've got Eric Holder on tape in the mid-'90s talking about they need to brainwash Americans and their attitudes towards firearms. And the brainwashing uh, is not, hey, be able to take care of yourself, uh, exercise your right. It's, it's guns are bad. And so we keep having this political statement of we're not anti-gun, congressmen. We're only in favor of common-sense gun safety regulations. But then culturally the message is if you own a gun, you're an awful person. And that message is being taught in our schools, and that's something we need to be well aware of. And I think it's every parent's responsibility to talk to their youngsters about what they're learning in school and make sure that doesn't go against some of the fundamental beliefs that uh, most of us have. They, they really are starting early, and they're saying, oh, you know, background checks, common sense all of which was re in reaction to Sandy Hook. Even if everything they wanted to do in the Senate bill were in place, it would have made a lick of difference on that tragedy. The, you know, the perpetrator stole the guns from his, uh, from his mom. Right. But, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it, it's, been a, it's been a long time since this debate was about our kids and the safety of our kids. It turned into a political debate, and I think really it turned into uh, an attempt to try to portray the NRA as weak and to 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 tell politicians like yourself congressman you don't need to you don't need to go along with what the extremists of the NRA uh, tell you to do you can vote against the will of the NRA and you can still get reelected because they don't understand that you're voting for the will of your constituents and that's what Obama's saying to you and Obama keeps coming out and saying these people in the house and congress who house the congress who are against the 90 percent they now everything is 90 percent with with gun control with him now and make makes you guys out to be you that you're anti-children. It, it may be 90% the other way in Texas. I was raised in a farming and ranching family. I mean, I went out with my grandfather, learned how to shoot safely, and, you know, when I was in elementary school. Yeah. And guns have been a part of my life uh, for as long as I can remember. I know how to use them safely. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of them. And it's important to me to to be armed. Yeah. And um, what about also this issue of all these states, you know, New York, Maryland, passing these very anti-radical, anti-gun measures? And Rick Perry, your governor, and a lot of other people in your state are making a big effort to get those manufacturers to move to we Texas. We actually got a, a gun manufacturer to move to Shiner, Texas, uh, which is in the district that uh, I represent. Oh. We're, we're, we, come What's, on down. We would love <laughs> to have you. What's so the you'll name have of the company? You'll have Shiner Box and, and Shiner uh, Rifles then, right? Yeah. Fantastic. That well, is great. You know, and that's the thing, you know, for, for all of these uh, anti-gun advocates out there who say, well, we don't want these companies in our state, there are plenty of states out there who do. Uh -huh. Low-cost energy in Texas, too. You know, you got to have some, uh, <laughs> you got you to have some natural gas to uh, keep that metal hot. Absolutely. Right. Well, Congressman, listen, before we run out of time, um, just any, any thoughts, any predictions on where the gun control debate uh, goes in Congress uh, the rest of this year? You know, I, I think there'll be some chest pounding, but it, it's not going to go anywhere in the House. I, I don't think anything's uh, going to happen, but I do think we need to monitor the U.N. Small Arms Treaty and how uh, our senators in particular uh, are, are reacting to that and make sure it d is DOA in the USA. Absolutely. <laughs> Emily Miller of the Washington Times, your uh, new book is, uh, you're, you're making progress on this, right? When is the, when are you coming out with the Emily Gets Her Gun? Uh, the book is called Emily Gets Her Gun, but Obama Wants to Take Yours. <laughs> and it's being published by Regnery on September 3rd. I have five chapters left to write and it's due in two weeks. So I'm, I'm working hard. But last night I had the best time. We went to the NRA range and shot the cover. So in the NRA range, I, Congressman, only learned to shoot, or shot for the first time a year and a half ago. Oh, wow. 
Um, and it was at the NRA range. And um, so everybody there was so nice to me. And, I, you know, I'm all experienced shooter now. Right. You, know? <laughs> well, you need <laughs> to get out there sick. regularly exactly. to keep your skills up. That's right. And I got a lecture from the uh, range manager there that I wasn't coming out often enough to train. So we uh, we do got a little late on the shoot. Well, I'm looking for an autographed copy when it comes Absolutely, out. Absolutely, sir. That you will get one. <laughs> Guys, well, thank you so much for your time. Emily, as always, a real pleasure. And uh, appreciate you both coming to the studio this afternoon. Anytime. Thank you.